Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to tell you a story called The Beetle, a fairy tale written a long time ago by Hans Christian Andersen. I'll tell you the story today in my own words. And I'm going to try something different. I'll be drawing a picture of a crazy, colorful beetle while I tell the story. If you want to try an art project like this, you'll just need some markers or paints, and you can use whatever colors and crazy patterns you want to on your picture. I'll also show you some pictures that were made for this book by artists who lived a long time ago. I hope you enjoy this story. Once upon a time, there lived an emperor who had the finest horse in the land. This horse had carried the emperor into battle many times and had saved his life more than once. Because of this, the emperor loved his horse very much put him in the finest and grandest stable, and even had shoes for him made out of gold. The blacksmith had just finished up putting the pure solid gold horseshoes on the emperor's horse when a little beetle who lived in the stables crawled out from the pile of manure, walked right up to the blacksmith and stuck out his tiny little legs and announced, I'm ready now. The blacksmith looked at the little beetle and said, ready for what? Well, for my new shoes, said the beetle. I do live in the royal stables, just like the emperor's horse. That makes me a royal beetle. So it's my turn for golden shoes too, don't you think? While the blacksmith tried very hard not to laugh at the idea of making golden horseshoes for a beetle. He looked at the little beetle and said, Do you know why the emperor's horse has golden horseshoes? Well, I don't know, said the beetle. It doesn't seem fair to me that he gets golden shoes when I don't. And the beetle got so upset at this that he decided to leave the royal stables and explore the world in hopes of finding proper people who would appreciate him for the very special royal beetle that he considered himself to be. No sooner had he left the stables than he encountered the garden that was full of flowers and it smelled so sweet. It was very beautiful. He met a little ladybug who said, Good morning. Isn't this a beautiful garden? Well, said the beetle, I come from the royal stables, and this isn't nearly as fine as the royal stables. I don't even see a good manure pile here in this garden. And he flew away from the ladybug. Next, he met a caterpillar who was crawling along on a leaf. The caterpillar said, good morning, beetle. Isn't this a beautiful sunny day? I just can't wait for the day that I get to turn into a butterfly and can fly away into the sky. Humph, said the beetle. A little worm like you be a butterfly. What a crazy imagination you have. What grand ideas. I happen to come from the royal stables myself, where all the important creatures live, and no one there even has such crazy dreams as that fly through the air. How silly. Of course, I can fly right now to the beetle. And he flew away, leaving the caterpillar behind. He flew and he flew. He flew so far and for so long that he got very tired. And he landed in a lawn full of green grass. He crawled down to the ground, curled up, and took a nap. But while the beetle was sleeping, it began to rain. It rained so hard that the poor beetle began to be washed away. He woke up coughing and spluttering in the water. He tried very hard to grab onto something, but the water just kept rushing him along. His wings were so wet, he couldn't even begin to dream of flying away. Finally, the poor beetle came to a stop next to some white sheets that had been laid out in the grass. He crawled under the white sheet to hide while it continued raining. 
He stayed there all day long while the rain poured down. Finally, when the rain started to let up a little bit, the beetle was brave enough to climb out from under the sheet, and he saw two frogs sitting there talking to each other. They were talking about how wonderful the weather was, how wet it was, how lovely it was, how much it made them want to go for a swim. One of the frogs even said that he was sure that not even the sparrow, who had flown all over the world to foreign lands, had ever seen a land with such wonderful, glorious weather like this. I don't know what's so good about it, said the beetle. I come from the royal stables, where everything is always warm and damp and perfect, and the muck pile is just right. This isn't nearly so grand as the royal stables, don't you think? Well, the frogs didn't even notice him and continued talking on amongst themselves. The beetle tried to get their attention several times, but finally got so upset, he declared, I never repeat myself twice and he flew off in a huff. He continued flying on until he saw a little pot that was broken lying on the ground, and he stopped there to rest. He discovered there were several families of earwig bugs living under the broken piece of pot. The earwigs were friendly and invited him to come stay with them for a while. The mother earwigs were such the proudest mothers in the entire world. They couldn't wait to tell this stranger all about their children. Every mother thought that their child was the most perfect, the most beautiful, the most talented, the most wonderful child in the entire world, and simply couldn't wait and talked over each other, telling him all about their precious babies. Before long, the baby earwigs began to climb around on top of the poor beetle, getting into all kinds of mischief, even pulling on his antennas. All of the mothers proudly watched them and cooed about how precious their little ones were. The beetle decided it was time for him to move on. So he asked the earwigs if there happened to be a nice manure pile around here that an important person such as himself could make himself comfortable in. One of the mother earwigs told him there was a manure pile over at the farmer's field, but it was so, so far away. It was all the way on the other side of the ditch. She said she wouldn't know how to survive if one of her dear precious babies ever traveled that far away from her. But the beetle didn't mind at all. So he quickly made his way across the ditch. As he got down to the middle of the ditch, he found many families of beetles who made their homes there in the mud. They were happy to see a fellow beetle and invited him in to come stay with them. He met a mother beetle that had three daughters, and he bragged loudly to them about how he happened to be a royal beetle that came from the emperor's stables. In fact, he said, I'm on a secret mission from the emperor right now. But I can't tell you anything about it, because it's a secret. The three beetle sisters just giggled because they didn't know what to say. But their mother thought that this beetle was a very fine looking gentleman from the royal palace and thought he'd make a lovely husband for one of her daughters. You know, dear Beetle, that my three daughters, none of them are married. And of course, I wouldn't want you to talk to them if you had bad intentions, but I can see that you're a fine Beetle and would only have the best of intentions, so I'll allow you to talk to my daughters. In fact, I think you should marry my eldest you would be the perfect couple. Before he knew it, all the other beetles had gathered around and began to cheer, announcing that soon there would be a wedding so everyone should get ready. The beetle didn't know what to say about all of this. He began to think about how being a husband and maybe even having children would mean lots of hard work for him. And he thought maybe it'd be best if he 
just snuck away when no one was looking. After he had crept away, the other beetles were very upset, especially the mother beetle, who couldn't believe that such a fine, gentlemanly beetle wouldn't want to marry her lovely daughter. The beetle continued on, but soon he was picked up by a couple of students. One of them grabbed him and eagerly looked at him from every which direction and excitedly told his friend, Look at this beetle! Isn't it nice? We should take it home and put it in our bug collection. But his friend said, No, we already have lots of beetles in the collection. Some even better than that one. You should put it back. Can you believe that, thought the beetle, better than me. And he flew away with his feelings very hurt. But he did finally make it to the field where there was the big pile of manure. It was inside the barn and the beetle snuck in through a crack in the window pane and made himself nice and comfy cozy. He settled off to take a nap, and he had a lovely dream. In the dream, the emperor's horse gave him his golden horseshoes, and he promised to have two more made for him, so he'd have one for all six of his little beetle feet. It was the best dream, but soon the beetle woke up and began to crawl around to explore his new home. Suddenly, he was picked up roughly and given a horrible squeeze by the farmer's son. He wanted to take the beetle home with him and play with him like a toy. Oh, the poor beetle. The boy wrapped him up inside of a leaf and shoved him into his pocket. The beetle tried very hard to get out, but every time he wriggled too much, the boy would reach in his pocket and give him such a squeeze that the beetle had no choice but to sit there and await what fate may come. The little boy found an old broken wooden shoe and he put a stick in the middle of it, sticking straight up in the air to make the mast of a sailing ship. He then took a piece of string and tied the poor little beetle to the mast so he couldn't get away. And he put this little boat in a lake that was there on the farm. The beetle did not want to be a sailor. But he had no choice because he couldn't get away. And he floated on in the water while the boy laughed. The beetle was scared of all that water. Every time he drifted too far from the shore, the little boy would splash into the water and pull the boat back to the shore again. And the beetle's journey would continue over and over again. Until finally the little boy's parents called him away for dinner, leaving the beetle still tied to the stick. The boat now floated farther and farther away to the shore. It floated so far out into the water that the beetle thought he would never see land again. When suddenly a little fly landed on the boat and said good morning. Isn't it a lovely day? What's so lovely about it? said the beetle. Can't you see that I'm stuck here and tied to this ship and can't get away? I can get away, said the fly, and he flew off leaving poor Mr. Beetle there. The beetle was so miserable. He couldn't believe it that he was there all alone. He was very upset that the fly had buzzed off like that. There isn't a decent creature other than myself in this whole wide world, thought the beetle. I have been so sorely treated, ignored by the frogs, I wasn't allowed to have golden horseshoes, squeezed by the farmer's boy, rejected by the students, and then abandoned by the fly. What a horrible and cruel world this is, full of rude and nasty creatures. I must be the only good, honest, noble creature in this entire world. And he began to imagine what horrible fate would come to him there in the deep water in the middle of the lake. Before long, a boat came by with two young women in it. They saw the poor beetle that was tied to the boat and they pulled him out of the water to come to his rescue. They took out a pair of scissors and very carefully 
cut the string so the beetle could fly away. That beetle flew as far and as hard as he could. He flew and he flew until he was all worn out. And he finally saw a huge building with an open window. So he flew inside the window and landed on the very first thing he saw. He was so exhausted he didn't realize where he was at first. But when he looked around, he suddenly realized he was sitting on the emperor's horse, right there on the horse's long, soft mane. And it was quite warm and cozy. Then he thought to himself, well, look at me. Here I am sitting on the emperor's horse. I'm the rider of the emperor's horse. Why, this is practically my horse, too. I am a royal beetle. And then he suddenly remembered the question the blacksmith asked him. Why did he think the horse had golden shoes? Now it all makes sense, said the beetle. They gave the horse golden shoes for me so that I could ride on the finest horse in the land. That was very thoughtful of them. I can't wait to go find some other beetles to go tell about my adventures and all about my horse with its golden shoes. But this is the end of our story for today.